Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. We're going to be accomplishing quite a lot today, although it's not going to be um, kind of material uh, gain so much as actually accomplishing work on the house as well as the interiors. I'm, I'm like finally starting to work on making the, the interior not just like look like a big empty room with stuff in it. I know that's a oxymoron, but I think you know what I mean. But the first thing we're going to do is jump right off of the roof and kill ourselves. That sounds really fun. I like that. I don't, I don't know about you, but it sounds like a fun activity to me. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is I uh, realized that this top of the roof needed a little bit of uh, tweaking because I have a particular idea in mind for uh, what I want the how I want the roof to function. Uh, like I said in the last episode, I've been doing some research on how the windmill mechanics work. And I do want to plan ahead a little bit. We're not building the windmill just yet, although we are kind of getting there. But we are, I, I'm going to be laying down some of the foundation. So uh, with that in mind, in order to get the most from your windmill, there's a couple of decisions you have to make if you want to go for basically speed or torque. Uh, I'm going to go for torque because I want my devices to function like consistently rather than fastly uh, you know if you know what I mean by that but uh, by the way here I've, I've I caved and I finally made myself a pair of clippers because they're good for getting sticks and I'm sick and tired of running out of sticks they're really nice I, I really appreciate these clippers but anyway um, I needed to kind of add an, uh, a little bit of an addition to the top of the roof to incorporate a large gear because what I'm going to be doing is basically having the windmill uh, sort of uh, axle run through the roof and then um, attach to a large gear and then the gear is going to be um, extending downwards like the, the axle from the gear is going to be extending downwards and it's going to be in the middle of the workshop supplying uh, torque to the rest of the devices. There will be various kind of, I think, clutches or uh, uh, devices that lets me kind of like power and unpower certain devices so I don't necessarily need everything. Uh, the only thing that I think is going to be a bit of a challenge will be the kern because the kern, sorry, kiern, kiern, uh, the only thing that uh, needs power delivered to the top of it is the kern and uh, that's going to be kind of an issue so um, that should be I don't know I'll have to figure it out but I'm sure it won't be too bad um, <clears throat> so here is here's the addition and I, I really do want to like as I say approach things with both form and uh, function in mind so this is where the uh, I plan the, the axle to come down and also where I need the gear, so I've, I figured I may as well make the gear. I had exactly enough resin to make the gear, as well as one fat, so it really kind of like, you know, the, the planets aligned to make that happen. And as well, as long as I was making specialized roof pieces, I figured I'd make a couple of more and kind of also plan how the roof is going to like fully come together, you know, how it's going to, to be complete. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're, oh, and there it is, Temporal Storm. I really was like focused on this session. I really, really wanted to get uh, as much of the roof done as possible because I don't necessarily want this to be one of those processes that takes like five episodes. Like remember, remember when I was living in a dirt shack and I didn't even have a place to live for like 10 episodes? That was kind of... Uh, like, I appreciate that, but I'll, at the same time, I would like to get some stuff sorted. But uh, I was fo focused on the roof there, but I accidentally fell off. Actually, I think a, a drifter threw a rock at me and it hit me off. They were really working together on that one. Uh, I had to blow through some of our cranberry juice there. Keep an eye on those barrels, by the way. There's some fun drama that's going to happen later with those barrels. You might even sort of see it coming, uh, but, you know, never mind. Nice thing to do while the temporal storm is happening, is since you have a bit of free time, is get some more shingles uh, set up. And uh, it, in this episode, I or session, I, I realized, I came to realize that I was going to need space and I was going to need uh, a, a place for doing pit kilns because the pit kilns have, have disappeared, basically, since... 
uh, I, I lived, I moved into the cottage. So therefore I put the pit kilns in the uh, secondary room that was supposed to be another cellar, but uh, never mind. And now it's a pit kiln room. And you might be able to see the, the pieces fall into place for a, a horrible kind of, well, it's not that bad, but at least a small catastrophe. Here's the clippers in work. Uh, I, I really appreciate them. I like that, you know, they, they really do kind of get rid of a lot of branches at once. Um, they don't work like the Minecraft clippers where they're just like very fast at clipping. They instead just like grab a whole bunch of, of branches at once. Um, so that's kind of nice. Found some quartz. I now no longer undervalue uh, quartz as a resource because I know that you can find gold and silver in there. And uh, that, that pile only had silver in it as far as I could tell, but I didn't do the whole thing. I only did a small amount. I was kind of getting distracted as is. So like I was only out there to get the stick so I complete the, could complete the uh, pit kilns. So I figured I, you know, do, you know, a little bit of exploration. We're uh, finishing or the black bronze here. Really, really love the look of the black bronze. Uh, and we're also getting the bloomeries started and that hence why I needed more pit kiln space. But uh, the, the bloomeries require that you craft bricks from four clay. They're actually one of the most expensive things you can spend clay on. Um, you can spend a stack of clay on them very easily, whereas a stack of clay can buy you a lot of shingles. But in any case, um, what's nice is that you can fire enough bricks to make one bloomery. So one, one pick kiln is enough to make a bloomery, which is kind of nice. Um, Finally putting the pieces in place, that uh, black bronze is nearly set. And it looks really nice. I really, really like the black bronze. I'm not sure, I feel like this is one of the few things that Vintage Story maybe abstracts, is like, I, I don't know if you make bronze from gold and silver. That doesn't sound right to me, but maybe let me know in the comments if that's something we do in real life. That, that, I mean, it sounds kind of fantastic to me, like in the, in terms of it being a like fantasy, but... Um, I don't know, maybe it's something we actually do, but in any case, the black bronze looks really cool, and it also makes some really nice tools. I don't know if this was a placebo effect or if it was genuinely true, but the black bronze uh, pickaxe that I make here feels like it's much, much faster than the regular bronze, so that's kind of nice. I do end up making a black bronze chisel as well, um, not for any particular reason other than I had to uh, heat up two bars. I think if you're going to do smithing, you should always heat up two bars because it's, you're saving yourself some time down the line. But I was very, very sure to watch the chisel actually quench this time and then collect it when it was done. Instead of just like, you know, my standard throw it into the water and then collect it later because I'm... That has now cost me some bronze, and I really don't undervalue that bronze. Even if we have a lot of bronze right now, I'm not I'm not going to uh, take it for granted. I will eventually need to get some more tin. Uh, we have tons of it in, right now, but still, I, I don't... Oh yeah, here I get absolutely destroyed. I, I was so close here to like making miracles happen, but you can see I like really tried my best. One of those wolves actually took off because they were close to death. But uh, the other one got me, so that's a bummer. Uh, I was making my way over to another copper vein because, as I say, copper is probably our, our bottleneck right now. Uh, we do have a little bit, but, you know, I, you're all, I'm always going to need copper. So it's a good thing I have a lot of copper veins marked out on the map. But uh, I kind of got lost. I mean, I made the mistake of, like, trying to do this at nighttime. I've been, like I said, been getting a bit more bold at night and uh, trying to find things, uh, find my way through in the darkness. But I found this interesting kind of like, I don't know, it feels like a pit in the middle of a mountain. And I was really intrigued by this, so I wanted to see what was in there. And as it turns out, quite a lot of things. Um, you could maybe see down there, there's uh, some lime and cassiterite, which is tin. Poor cassiterite, I'll take it, honestly. I'll take it over very poor, and honestly, tin is one of those things that's gonna always be a little bit of a challenge for me to find, so. Um, but the lime is what really intrigues me. Uh, lime is one of those things I really, really have been lacking more than maybe any other material. If I want to start processing our leather in bulk, then I'm gonna need a lot of lime, and the best way to do that is by mining it. Um, finally found, like, it's been a while, seems like, since we've found some, uh, claystone boulders for uh, material gathering so it was kind of nice to finally find some more 
And here's our copper vein. I had this copper vein marked on our map for the longest time as being a huge vein. And and then I come here and it was like 10 blocks maybe. And I was like, wow, that's nothing. <laughs> like, that was really disappointing. And there's a bunch of other stuff there. There's actually some uh, more limite. It says high limite. So this will be a location that will be very worthwhile to come back to. I actually tried my best to, to find some, but didn't end up doing so. And I, I wanted to kind of get to other things. But at a certain point, I will probably spend an entire session doing, uh, you know, focusing on resource gathering. So, but uh, in any case, I was still still on the hunt for some stuff. And uh, I found, came across this other interesting looking cavern. Um which was genuinely pretty cavernous. I mean, it was like very labyrinthine and twisty and turny. So that was kind of kind of neat. And there's some good stuff in there as well. You can see poor cinnabar and decent limite magnetite. Magnetite is interesting to me. I don't really understand. Like, that's the first time I've come across magnetite. Uh, is it magnetite? I can't. I missed it there. Whoops. Oh, well. Maybe I'm sounding like a fool, but um, I don't know what we're, what we're spending that on. Um, similarly with cinnabar, which I know, cinnabar is an interesting material. I know it's like very, very toxic. Like in real life, if you touch that stuff, you will probably, yeah, I don't know if you will die, but you get very, very sick. Cinnabar is just like really nasty material. So I'm not sure what we're going to be using it for in this game. I do know it has some function, but in any case, I didn't find it because I got destroyed by this dweller who absolutely... It came out of nowhere um, as I was trying to struggling to climb up that water slide. But anyway, we're back. We're back at home, and uh, I got enough materials that it was good enough. I, I really the main reason I was out there it was you know besides the copper, I'm out there to collect claystone. And now you, you we see that we get the closure on these pit kilns. My barrels are gone, uh, so I imagine the fire from the pit kilns. Uh, traveled to the, the barrels and and basically burned them all down very lucky to me that the the that room was segregated by stone uh because like it i think it probably saved my house from burning down um that could have very very easily happened so um yeah i mean we avoided a very large catastrophe and i mean the worst thing that happened is i lost some barrels and they didn't even have anything in them so uh, I'm I'm pretty grateful for that. But we uh, here's our bloomery built from the the bricks that are that are now burned. And I really wanted to give it an area. I didn't understand um, how the bloomeries worked yet, and so I wanted to give it a um, basically a faux air circulation, basically a chimney. I wanted to give it a chimney. Um, and then I came to realize later that the bloomery is not a permanent. Uh, device. It's one that you use once and then you break it in order to get your supplies. So this chimney um, ended up not being a thing that the, I would make use of for the bloomeries. It will be, however, useful once the bloomery has done its thing um, for the forge. I think it'll. I think the forge will will fit really nicely in there. Um, either that, or I don't know. I might move things around and, and move the kitchen in that area and then put a, an oven there or something. But I think that the uh, this this episode I, I spend quite a bit of time uh, working on the, the the smithing area. I wanted it to feel more like a workshop and, and less just like a corner. So, you know, because like I've been I've been doing a lot of work on like completing the general structure of this cottage, but I haven't really spent a lot of time um, focusing on making it look pleasant at all. It's been way more function than form. So. Uh, that's why I've been taking a bit of extra time on things like this chimney to make it feel a little bit more like rooted in reality as well as uh, like almost uh, have it connected to the functions that we actually uh, have like you know our, our forge or our smithy. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results of, of the session which you will see in a, in a bit but um, not before I don't I, I spend a, bu a bunch more time working on the roof and it is coming together um, Slowly, but surely I think I might actually have enough uh, Shingles to complete the roof, but I am actually lacking Claystone to make that happen. You can see I, I use up a lot of claystone 
on this roof. And it's mostly because it's just easier to place uh, roof pieces. I, I could like destroy claystone blocks after I've placed the shingled roofs, but I don't think it'll look very nice. And honestly, even after I'm done, I'm, I'm gonna have to do some funky things with the interior of the roof to, to make it look a bit nicer on the inside. Um, so that's gonna be tricky. And like I say, I don't have those rafter blocks that uh, Minecraft has. So, you know, working on um, elevated areas is, is tricky. I'm sure it's gonna bother a few people that I spend so much time here not eating, so you can hear me taking damage. Uh, I don't blame you, but I was really focused on the task at hand, which was to complete um, basically the walls that connected the roof to the rest of the building. I really didn't like that the roof was just kind of like floating in, in air. It was connected, but very, very lightly and not, not realistically. So that was really bothering me. And I wanted to kind of get some stuff done on it. So hence why I spent so much time here not eating. And I actually get kind of close to dying from starvation, which is pretty funny. Not unlike real life. Sometimes you get so focused that you just uh, neglect your human functions, you know? Uh, or maybe, maybe I do. I'm sure everyone else acts like a normal human being and actually get, you know, puts food in their body when they need it. Um, I realized after uh, I started uh, finished some of the roof that this chimney was not tall enough. I mean, the part of the function of the chimney is to carry the that, you know, smoke up above the roof so that it doesn't basically like stain your bricks or it doesn't like you don't you want to you don't want uh, soot to kind of collect in an area creates a fire hazard. Um, I might do some more work on this chimney later. Right now, it just feels like a slab of andesite cobblestone, but I don't like I don't dislike it. I think it's a good starting point. So, I think everything in this cottage will at some point get some kind of decorative flair. Um, that's the plan, and I, like, I, I really do want it to feel like it's a place that someone lived in. Um, so, I really, I, I really appreciate in um, Vintage Story the customization options. Um, it's, it's really refreshing. Like, the chisel is seriously, like, one of the coolest um, items that has been added to a voxel-based game. Um, just like functionally, it works very, very well. It could be a bit better for like adding extra details or adding different textured blocks to other blocks could be better, but it's as it is right now, it is very, very good. And, uh, it's more than I could ask. And the fact that you can even like pick up detailed blocks and place them somewhere else, like I, I could edit that chimney that goes a long way for me. And I really appreciated it. So there's our bloomery going. I had to, it took me a little while to figure out that we needed black coal in there to actually get the quartz burning. We are we are working on quartz right now. Um, we'll save some black coal for iron later, but I wanted the quartz to get going because I want glass for the greenhouse. Greenhouse has been like seriously neglected, but uh, it's something I'm still semi working on. Um, you know, maybe after the roof is like finished, um, which I know is an ambitious statement, but uh, we'll, we'll start to consider uh, giving the greenhouse more attention. I figure there's no real point in like finishing it in, because it's still winter time, but uh, you know, like I, I'm gonna probably wanna plant in spring. Maybe that's a mistake though, I don't know. So you, you can see I'm starting to work on the, the blacksmithing area, or I guess just the smithy. Um, I. I liked this at the time. I kind of built this enclosure with tables, but having looked, you know, reviewed the footage, uh, I, I've come to not like it. I think that what I might do in the future is remove these tables and put in some more andesite brick. You're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna basically give, give these tables a little bit of a roof yeah, right there with some andesite cobblestone. And I really like this effect. I think it looks really nice. Um, but, uh, you know, functionally, I don't know if this makes a lot of sense because it uh, means I'm pouring hot, you know, metals or molten metals onto those uh, molds while they're on wooden tables. And I just don't think that that's something that anyone would do. Um, maybe they do. I don't know. I'm not a smithy and I don't. You know, I tend not to research these kind of things, so 
maybe they do but i think it would make more sense if i made some like uh stone tables that uh, functionally you know were they looked a bit more safer uh in, in terms of like hot liquids being poured on substances i don't know i i just think it would look better but uh this this works for now i might choose a different material from andesite because i want that to contrast a little bit i do end up using granite for these details might bother a few people that th that it's inconsistent but i kind of like the contrast so i don't know um i guess it doesn't matter what you do it's going to bother someone but I haven't really received any uh, negative comments, so you know, never never mind. Maybe maybe it's it's just all in my head. <laughs> like you can you can uh, you can imagine anyone saying something negative about something you make, but uh, that's pretty much gonna do it for this episode. You can see a little bit of the detailing I do to this area, but that's pretty much the finished um, part of the the smithy, and I think it looks pretty good. But you let me know. Let me know in the comments. What, what could it use? What could be changed? What could be improved? And I'll see you guys next time. If you want to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And maybe subscribe. That'd be cool. Take it easy, guys.